welcome to one other tutorial of SafeFlow 3. Uh, I think this is the first tutorial I make about uh, the version 3, which has changed a lot in quite a number of uh, features. But let me introduce first uh, how to design a Winds of Safe. Okay, so first thing to do is that uh, I will load um, a reference design, an image which I find on internet, uh, about a Windsor save which I want to copy for instance and for do that I go to add image and reference I already loaded it so that it is you can use mirror in case it's not you know in this uh, position and you can select it and use G grab and move it in a way that the beginning of the sale match this uh, little cross Okay, then you go to you, you select the tab safe flow and then you go to create plan sale and that you have it. Uh, I already did one, uh, you can see it here, uh, which uh, match pretty well the sale itself. But let me explain how I do it. Uh, I f if I don't know the length of the luff of the leech and of the base, what I do. I move this until it matches and the same I do with the angle for instance until it matches the inclination and uh, this position here I use the leech length for instance and uh, the base length okay and I can still maneuver this curve and this curve but not the base curve when I'm in spline base design uh, in which I can have a positive or a negative and in this case was I think minus four and uh, the same for the love I can have a position where the curve is and how much it is curved uh, remember that if you don't have enough uh, splines, which are this horizontal line that we look at it in a moment, uh, we will not, uh, self flow 3 will not follow accurately the curvature of the mass. So what I suggest to you is that you made more in case you have trouble. One important thing uh, here is that the camber position and the camber depth, you see now, let me go back to a solid mode, you see now the how it, how it looks like uh, I can increase the camber depth for instance okay so you want to have something small I suppose and I can change where it is okay there is also a two-point uh, base design where you have more control on the depth of the sail it's slightly more complicated for this example I will use this mode so let's assume this is what I want okay so I click in the screen, now I'm in edit mode, which is by the way written also here. I go to top view mode, very important, because then whatever I do, I always move the point on X, Y plane and not in Z. And for instance, I want to follow this curve. Uh, you have several ways you can do it, but for me the best is to select this segment here, say grab and move it here. Also here it's not perfectly aligned, so I'll move it down here. And now I have this nice curve. If I want to have it more close to this uh, um, dot here, what I do is that with this selected, I go to item, and this is the attraction value, if you like. And if I increase the attraction value, you see the curve gets more close to it. Or then I can you know, move it and do whatever I want with it. Mm, I could do something similar here. However, I don't have this uh, double dot. So what I can do is that I move this here and this means that this curve will be in this direction. But maybe this is what I wanted. Uh, I move this away, this a bit more here and then I increase the strength. Okay. okay I suppose that is exactly what we want. Maybe we want it a bit, uh, a bit, oops, a bit higher. This is maybe too high, I go down, well, enough, okay. Now, <clears throat> I can play th with this uh, as much as I want. Uh, I can you know, grab this and move it because my, it was not exactly what I 
is not exactly the curve that I want. Okay, maybe that exactly. And other things I can do, I can play with the twist. So I can uh, open up a bit the sail here and maybe also here. And uh, yeah, depending from what I want. Okay, so I finished. And I'm not a windsurf, windsurf sail design, so apologies for that. I finish, I go to object mode, I press tab actually to do that, save flow, and I convert to a mesh. So I need to select it and convert to a mesh. I, uh, okay, now I have a mesh. I don't have any more uh, a spline surface. So what I have to do now is to create panels. Uh, my sail below here has already this. And the way to do it, I use panel cutter. Uh, which is a new tool which has been introduced in Save Flow 3. What is this uh, panel cutter? It is a system to cut uh, one object using a second object and using the edges of the second object. Now I'll show you what, it, what I mean. I create a grid <coughs> like that. Subdivisions in X, I can put one and subdivision in, uh, in Y7 in this case. Okay, now I have this object. I move it somewhere here, I size it, and maybe I rotate it. Mm. Okay, now I want to align all those lines, this one, the cross, the say, in a way that they really cut where these buttons are. Go to edit mode, press in tab, press 1, so I can select the vertices, and now I start moving the vertices in a way that the edge, the line that connects the vertices, cut exactly in the point where I want. Uh, remember that these um, vertices, the one connecting the edges, has to stay outside the sail. Uh, they cannot be inside, they have to be outside, otherwise it will not work. Okay, almost there. Maybe I put too many, I don't know. I'll, I'll see in a second. One here, one here. Uh, let, let me move this one very much in the top, this one. Okay, it's more or less correct. Uh, I don't want to be too picky here because it's just an example, okay? Fine, I go back to object mode. I select the pictures because now I don't need it. I press H, so it is still here, but it's hidden. I first select the shape that need to cut my sail, and then keeping the shift press, I click also the sail. So this becomes sort of orange and this is more yellow. And then when I press panel cut and I wait that this becomes from blue gray again. It takes a bit, a little bit of calculation to be done, but now it's finished. It was rather simple. I press, I select the cutter and I press H, so it disappears. Again, it's still here, but just out. And now my cell is cut. You see, the panel are cut. I go to <coughs> edit mode. I press 3, so I now select faces. I select any of the faces in the panel I want to develop. I press L. And everything in between two uh, seam is connected. What happens here is that not always the panel cutter works well. And in this case, he has not marked as seam all the new edges that he has created. So what I suggest to do in this case, which should be rare, Maybe in, in the future I will try to make it back better. I select the one really on a, on a corner. I go to the next one and keep in press uh, control. I select the second one and everything in between is now connected. Okay, so the only thing I have to do is to press uh, in the case of a Mac M3 and I say mark seam and now everything is marked as a seam. Okay, maybe it's a bug in the algorithm that I will remove later on. I go back to face mode, and voila, and now it's all fine. So let's develop this panel. Okay, already done with a distortion of 0.8, which is pretty fine, and there is a small error in the overall surface, but overall the panel looks very okay. And in this case, I would not suggest you to do anything different. I go to another panel, I develop again. This time I have a slightly more distortion, but it's still okay. 
go to the next one and I develop and now it's 12. Ah, oh, 12 is really a bit too much. Let me have a look at the phase itself. Uh, you see I have some problem here clearly. Uh, this happens typically when the curvature is too much for uh, for making a 2D surface out of it. Mathematically it doesn't work basically. Um, but what the tool can do is to try to stretch a bit the the textile or the imaginary cloth and try to make it uh, flat. And it's called the stress stress relief. I press this and I go develop selected face and then I wait. I wait that this becomes gray again. It takes a bit of time. This is a lot of calculation, I can tell you, but uh, it will go there. Okay, now it's finished. <clears throat> the average distortion is now 0 0.7 and uh, and the surf uh, I mean, the surface is, is more or less the same, which is very okay. Let me go and now the panel is so much smoother than it was before. Okay, good. So we can go to the next and repeat exactly the same process. We don't need to use uh, stress uh, relief all the time because it makes it you know, slower. I mean, if you don't have any rush, you can still do it. For me, for this example, it's perfectly fine. And voila. Now, let me hide the sail. And now you have, yeah, you have your panels. Okay. What you can do now is to use this uh, utility there to print it and, and make it. So that's it for the moment. That is uh, the example of how to make a windsor sail with the new Sailflow 3. Check that the version is 3.03 because the 3.01 and 2 had a number of bugs which I cleaned up. Thank you very much.